And I have kind of that mindset every time I get on the phone call, even with a doctor or an office manager, here's what I, here's how I can help you. Real simple. If that serves you, great. If not, no worries. Please just tuck me in a little brain pocket if you need me. Welcome to the Business Builder Way podcast, where we help business builders grow leadership skills and wisdom and stay grounded through business builder hero stories. So let's get after it. Hey, business builders. We're joined today by the... Susie Tichinski, and Susie is the creator and inventor and builder of Adaptive Mobility, and she's going to tell us more about that, and also uh, the creator of a family. I see a picture of your daughter behind you there, Susie, yeah. and, and we'll talk more about all those things, but where I'd like to start today is I just I saw a post that you had put on LinkedIn, and it was you sitting in the car with one of your clients. And so, and you were very uh, excited and so was she. And I'd like to start with how does the work you do and the business you're building make the world a better place? Oh my goodness. I, okay. (laughs) This is a great question. Thank you. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to be on this podcast and to talk to you, Wayne. So thank you for having me. Um, So the video you're talking about is with a wonderful woman. Her name is Fran. And I met Fran, um, she unfortunately was involved in a a bad accident. She was outside of a vehicle and was hit and she ended up losing both of her legs. And the timing of this, it was right at the start of the pandemic. So imagine kind of going through that entire health emergency situation while your family can't really be close to you, you know, the perseverance that you have to overcome. She's in her seventies. you know, so she's, she can come a long way. And I think I met her about a year and a half after her injuries and her amputations were such that the one is so high on her one leg. She won't wear a pro like it's, there, there's no benefit of a prosthetic. And then the other one, she does have a prosthetic for, but she essentially operates from a wheelchair. Well, Fran being Fran, because she's kind of amazing decided that she wasn't, you know, satisfied with just living in her power chair, living in her community, and she wanted to drive. So um, she started by finding a a vendor who does modified vans, and that vendor um, connected her to me. And the two of us just had a really awesome connection off, you know, right off the bat. So Fran is a typical client of mine who's wanting to return to driving after an injury or illness. And I'm an occupational therapist with advanced training in driver rehab. So what I do is I go and I see Fran at her home. I take a look at her different skills and I try and look at them one at a time um, so that I can understand what, how someone's doing. So vision, thinking, moving, coordination. And then I'm using my skills to figure out what options might work great for Fran. Then we go and I get her in my driving rehab vehicle and let her try those different options. I help her train, get her relicensed, and then we help get the right equipment in her car. So the work we get to do together, you know, kind of takes place over probably four or six visits, but usually over a couple months because we have to work with the PennDOT process as well. But at the end, we have Fran driving and doing the things she wants to do. And I love to ask my clients when we're done, where did you go? Right. Because, you know, we all have places we have to go and we've all experienced this when we had our stay at home orders during the pandemic. I think, you know, that, that enlightened us on a lot, a lot. Um, And we all had to stay home. And we missed going to the grocery store and getting our medications and going to the doctor and going to work and doing those things we have to do. But driving connects us also to the things we really want to do. And so, you know, I think for Fran, I remember this about her. She really wanted to be able to get Starbucks. Who doesn't love a good cup of coffee? And she was tired of other people picking out her fruit for her, Hmm. which is a big thing. If you're a fruit person, you want to pick out your own produce, right? So those were the the two things I remember that she was most excited about after being able to drive. So I'm really lucky because I found a path that lets me work with people and help them return to 
the life in the community that is meaningful for them. That's beyond getting dressed, beyond operating in their home, even for Fran. And she lives in a community that's, um, it's an, it's an adult community. And so you have to be 50 to live there. And she could live in a power chair there. Like there's restaurants and there's exercise groups and she can do everything she wants on that campus, but she wants to go beyond the campus. She wants to live her life in every way she wants to. And that's what I get to do in my job as a driving specialist. I think it comes through in your voice, but for anybody who's not watching video, your smile yeah, kind of says it all in terms of the work that you get to do in the world. So Susie, that's the, you sitting next to Fran in a car and both of you celebrating her regaining her freedom in that way and being able to drive is something that I imagine that everybody can visualize. You get to do work like that. And then beyond you're you're going beyond that so you are a business builder Susie Tichensky and you are in the process of building can you share a bit more of what you're building how does it so that's the at the basis most of our um builders out there have something like that where they're serving somebody in a you know intimate kind of way or helping them with a product uh, etc and then they choose to build and go beyond that so what, what are you building? I always think about my, my business as almost as two separate parts, but they're really integrated at the heart because it's all about being a really great occupational therapist and helping to serve people. So um, while we have the one side helping people like Fran, um, the other half of my business is helping occupational therapists understand their role with driving. And then those who want to become specialists, I offer a training for becoming a specialist, uh, which is a pretty unique training. So there's a lot you can do online, but as you can imagine, I'm in the moving car with somebody. So my training and education includes a three days hands-on in the car, learning the ins and outs of operating the vehicle. And then I also offer people for people who want to start their own practice, a mentorship. So when I came into my own private practice, <clears throat> maybe you're going to ask me this, maybe I'm jumping the gun, but when I came into it, um, I started on my 40th birthday in 2018, I signed all my paperwork. Um, but getting to that point, I almost, I needed a really big nudge for my own mentors to step into private practice. Prior to this, I had been working in healthcare. I worked for a big rehab company. I was running a driving program Lots of things were changing in, um, you know, 2017, 2018 with reimbursement. And I was just part of a massive layoff. Never expected it, never anticipated it. When I got laid off, I started looking around for other OT jobs. And it was my husband and my mentor who said to me, what are you doing? You finally made it back to driving. You love driving rehab. Why are you looking for just a regular OT job? And I don't mean it as like regular, but like mainstream OT job, right? Because what OTs do at every level is amazing. But that wasn't going to fulfill me or serve me. Um, and what's interesting is when they suggested that to me, you know, I'm pretty sure I actually hung up on my mentor, which I really need to apologize for. We could do that right now. <laughs> I guess I'm sorry, <laughs> Susan. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's interesting because my husband, Buddy, has his own practice, and Susan had her own practice, my mentor, and they could see in me that I had everything I needed to get going, and I couldn't see that within myself. And it took somebody kind of shifting my mindset a little bit there to help me realize I had everything I needed to get started in building my business. So, long story short, is I've built three different driving programs, one for a hospital system, one for a big rehab company, and now for myself. And what I decided was I wanted to be the cheerleader for other OTs who are ready to step out, who are thinking maybe they're ready, who are just scared and don't have the, you know, don't know who to go to with the questions. And so as part of my journey with training OTs to be specialists, I also train OTs who want to start their own practice and I mentor people one-on-one -on -one there. 
And that's been really, really rewarding because my big mission is to just help OTs really step into their power. And I think driving is a really powerful area of practice. So <clears throat> yeah, part, partially what we do on the Business Builder Way podcast is we we help people like you tell their story because I believe it's an encouragement to others who are also on the path and on the journey to building a business to hear from somebody like you about the good and the bad. And we loosely follow the outline of the, the hero's journey and the hero's journey starts out with the call, a call to adventure, a call to build something. And that's what we just talked about. And in, in the, the hero's journey, often involves somebody being resistant to it. Like, you know, I think I'll go back to what's safe and comfortable. So you didn't jump ahead, but yes, that's that's what I hear you describing as we talk about getting your start and going from having, I, yeah, go ahead. I'll say, I love that hero journey. And I know you just interviewed Casey, who I've worked with the story brand and um, Star Wars is a big thing in my family. So we really identify with this hero journey. And um, when you talk about kind of those obstacles, I hear, you know, whiny Luke Skywalker in my head go, but I don't want to go to the Dagobah system, you know, and it's, it's those struggles that we all kind of have, you know, and I'm going, well, I don't know if I can start my own private practice, guys, and finding my voice past that has been a big part of building my business. Yeah. And, and, and. There, there's, as you said, there's like two separate parts to your business. So I think the, you've been on a hero's journey to build the private practice start of it, where you're in a relatively small community uh, here in uh, Southeast Pennsylvania and not in the Philadelphia market, but in um, uh, close to Reading, Pennsylvania, North of Reading is where we live. So you've, you built that out and when, when have gone on a journey in that, can you tell us a bit about that? Tell us about um, starting out your first, so you had a, probably had a first client somewhere along the way. And now you're, you're booked in that practice, in that as, as much as you want to be, you've, you've, you work several days a week, helping people like Fran, how how did you build that? How did that happen? Um, So I decided early on when I was coming into private practice that one of the things I really wanted to be able to do was create a schedule where I could be a mom and be a family member the way I wanted is to be fit. Um, you know, it's really tough when you work in traditional healthcare. This time of year, I'm extremely grateful because I've spent the day at home. I'm working, but I'm here at home and I'm wrapping presents and I'm doing things in between answering phone calls. And that's an amazing thing versus trying to decide which holiday I'm going to take off and have to work. Like that's, that's an incredible pain I did for 20 years that I think about. And I'm so grateful to have my own peace where I can make these decisions. So I've set up my, my business, my practice side where I work with people. I started three days a week and then um, I actually prioritized two days a week now. Um, but I just slowly built those those relationships. So I made connections with the different vendors who install equipment and the different doctors in the area. And um, I did a lot of work with you because I initially was like, oh my gosh, I'm not good at sales. How do I sell this? And one of the things I really had to get my head around was I'm not I'm not really selling something. What I'm doing is serving people. And when I come from a, from a standpoint of serving and helping people, when they choose me, great. And if they don't choose me, no problem. And I have kind of that mindset every time I get on the phone call, even with a doctor or an office manager, here's what I, here's how I can help you. Real simple. If that serves you, great. If not, no worries. Please just tuck me in a little brain pocket if you need me. Okay. Um, so slowly over time, just by providing really good care, really thinking about who I was working with and what they needed from me and making sure it was helpful to them in a quick, efficient way, just really built my business. Um, so I see people, I was, I was getting busy. I was getting three or four times a week and, um, I was hesitant to expand, but I brought somebody else on with me also. So now I have another OT with me 
and she's in North Jersey because I actually, I'm licensed in Pennsylvania and New Jersey and I will cover both states, but now I've got Gabby and she's in North Jersey and she can really help out. And that's allowed me to be able to serve more people, but keep my schedule where I'm happy and I'm getting to the bus stop and I'm not kind of overworking myself where it's becoming a chore, but everyone's still a joy. Everything's still a joy. So you just mentioned how in the beginning or or some time ago, you viewed it as, uh, well, I'm not good at sales or how am I going to build this thing? I remember that, and, and I share this or ask you this question because other people may need this or it might be helpful for them. I remember you coming out here and to, out here to the farm and and drawing on a flip chart um well a lot of things but one thing is I, I think it had to do with um like prioritizing uh it's it's what what is who do we who do you serve your your mission is it you it, is it the kind of work you should be doing is it a priority right now and then you are a person who takes a concept like that and and you have a notebook and I remember you sent me a you you redid it. You did it in your way. You did what you heard, uh, and it was like a spiral that you uh, drew with colors. Oh my gosh! I could pull it right out. You want to see it? <laughs> sure. Yeah. And you'll have, we'll have to like kind of verbally describe it for anybody. Yeah. Thing, so but... I know exactly what you're talking about. And in the beginning, um, right. I wanted to get really clear. Sorry to lean away from the mic. I wanted to you, like your suggestion to me was to get really clear on who I was helping and who I was serving, because that helped to just, it shaped everything for me with how I shared my story to people. You know, I wasn't, I could feel myself before this getting on the phone and almost choking, thinking, wow, you know, like what I provide is expensive for some people. It's between four and $500. And I and you don't use phone, insurance. Right. And I don't take insurance. It's all cash based. Right. Our dear friends in the government decided driving is not essential you know, so it's not covered. That makes sense, right? right? That's okay. That's okay. That's why I'm not in that system anymore. Sarcasm noted. <laughs> so, um, you know, but I just had this pressure, right? I felt this pressure. I wanted to make it work. I wanted to sell the product. I wanted to, and then you and I talked about how let's take that pressure off and let's look at it from how you're going to serve these people and how you're going to help these people. And all of a sudden, it wasn't about Susie selling this evaluation. It was about me helping Fran, right? Me helping these clients, me helping these families with really tough answers. Um, I just got off the phone before this phone call with a nurse practitioner. I always joke, we're kind of one of the world's best kept secrets. No one knows that OTs do this, right? I think there's like 80,000 OTs in the United States and 500 of us are specialists in driving. Mm -hmm. It's a crazy ratio. But this nurse practitioner, oh my goodness, I'm so glad I found you. You're exactly what I need. You know, I didn't know anybody like you was out there. That kind of stuff fuels me because now I can serve. I can give her something. I can help her find the answers. I can help her with this family. Um, and so we talked about the idea of, um, you know, getting really clear and I made a patient avatar, which I think I've got here too, where I just kind of drew my, my little person in the middle and then all the different qualities of my clients. And I'll just hold it up. Yeah. If you happen to be watching the video. So oh, wonderful. So that is a better drawing than what I normally make. Um, <laughs> I, I normally have stick figures, but you have something that actually has a body and fingers and With that's some kind of clothing on that, yeah, that person. Some kind of clothing. I'm not, not sure what it is. Right. Right. And so I just kind of went through like, who is this person? Like they're, they're ready to work with me, right? They're, I need to work with a licensed driver. They're motivated. They want you. Right. Anyway, I went through all those details and I really got clear on who that person was. And then what you're talking about the spiral is we went through the idea of, because I think I remember I said to you, Wayne, I'm just saying yes to everything right now. <laughs> right. You know, I started my business. I had to shift. It was so funny when I actually started my business, the first couple of weeks, I would make a list of what my day was going to look like. And I'm telling my husband, here's what I'm going to do today. And, you know, buddy was kind of like, that's great. 
why are you telling me? You know? And in my head, I'm telling him because I have always had a boss. And I'm like, girl, why are you telling your husband? He's not your boss. <laughs> but like, I felt like, and he, and even he was kind of like, what are you doing? But it, I needed to change my mindset from working for someone where I've always done checks and balances and checked in and, you know, thinking about my productivity and what I'm doing to, oh, I'm in charge. And, oh, look how fast I can make decisions. And, oh, I get to decide what I do here. Um, and so part of that, I, I went a little big and I started saying yes to everything. And you and I worked on the idea of a decision-making funnel. And so that's the spiral one with uh, that's taking, it right there. Yeah. yeah. Taking different decisions and making, you know, putting them through the funnel where it doesn't meet my mission, doesn't meet my goals. Is it a priority for me now? And right. so it doesn't, sorry. not, not your mission. Does it align with my mission? Yeah. And if it's not, it's out. It's a no. Right. If it aligns with my mission, then does it align with who I am? If if not, can I delegate it? Working on that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then is it a priority right now? And if not, maybe someday. Someday, maybe, right. Put it on a different list. Right. And so many different choices come at us and it's... um all these things we should be doing and somebody who would be trying to fill the car so practical the way you have a car with controls and you're trying to fill that car for all your appointment slots there's a lot of different marketing things that come at you that might be uh allow you to not you don't have to be uncomfortable to do marketing things you um you don't have to face that oh, I don't like to sell type of thing. But you filtered through a lot of that and then made the connections and had the conversations. And now those people are part of your network and they're sending you clients. Absolutely. And I, oh, I'm sorry. You seem to have another nope, thought go. there. I was gonna see the other piece with that that really helped was um, I'm really good at being busy. But as a business builder, we have to prioritize what we're doing. So we're getting the right things done. And so I would be, I, what I was finding myself doing was being really busy and all over the place, almost as um, a coping strategy for not facing that hard thing for me. Right. And so when I got really clear on my mission and who I was serving, I got really focused on my decision-making funnel, sharing my story, sharing who I serve became the priority. And when I made that the priority, things really just started to flow for me, which was lovely. And I see the same thing in the people I mentor. It, it's great because I can say, you know, I'm working with this wonderful OT now, her name's Michelle. And I said to her the other day, Michelle, I see you doing exactly what I did. You're doing all this busy stuff and you're doing, getting everything done, except for that thing I'm asking you to do about putting yourself out there. Cause that's the scary one right? What if people hear what I'm doing and they say no? Well, who cares if they say no? Someone's going to say yes. Somebody needs you. And when you don't share who you are and what okay. you can do, you're actually doing a disservice to the world. So helping people with that. And for me, mentoring that is incredibly powerful because it's a great reinforcer for me and where I'm going also. Ah, uh, right. When you, when you give other people advice, you have to kind of pay attention to it yourself. That's true. I find that. But I, <clears throat> so one, one of the things that I've tried to bring out here as we do these podcasts is things that people can do in their journal, <laughs> things that they can implement in their own world. And you, you do that really well. Like that's an example, what you were holding up on the screen that, yeah, people listening can't see, but the fact that you took some of the things we did here and then went and had a place where you could get some thinking time and, and redid it and wrote it out and then executed it. You didn't just sit with your journal and have it be a nice thing on the shelf. You wrote out who it was you were working to get in touch with, and then you did it. Mm. Do you have, so, and this isn't about me. And isn't there, there's other thinking partners or coaches or people that a business owner could go sit with. How, but but so it's not about me. It's uh, if somebody has 
somebody else in their life, coaching is like half on the coach and half on the client. And, and you've been a really great client. How do, how do you, how, how would you advise somebody else to go take a framework like that and then go process it and then actually implement it? Well, I can tell you what's worked for me. What I've realized I really need is um, space. I need to create the space for that. So, um, and I'm, when I set my goals, I'm constantly thinking about creating space in my calendar. Cause it's, like I said, I'm really good at being really busy. Um, so, you know, it's, it's journaling is not second nature for me, but when I take the time and I set the space for it and I reflect on the conversations and what I do is I allow myself I, li- I really like to draw. I'm somebody who loves to doodle mm-hmm. and giving myself the freedom and the idea that it doesn't have to be words on a paper, but it could be a picture that reminds me, or sometimes it's, um, I'm forever, you know, printing off little memes or things off of the internet and hanging them on my wall as just visual reminders. And so I think, um, finding inspiration where you can, but remembering that, as a creator, you need to give yourself space to create. And that's kind of a weird thing because especially when you come from, you know, where I came from in healthcare, where we're like productivity and deadlines and lists and what did you do today? And how does your calendar look? Setting up time in my day for me to think about where I want to go. It's the most important time for me. And it's the thing that I have to just really prioritize and value. I joke that I go to um, staff meetings on Mondays for yoga. Okay, I don't always make it on Monday mornings. Sometimes there's a Wednesday morning. Sometimes there's a Friday morning, whenever I can. But I love that habit, that routine of going in because I'm giving my brain, like it's, it's letting ideas marinate, right? And being in a place where different things just bubble up, taking time. One of my other favorite things to do is to just take time to make sure I'm walking to the bus stop that 15, 20 minutes. And I, you know, I could take a podcast or I could take a phone call and sometimes I do, but just trying to leave that stuff so I can sit with my thoughts and sit with my ideas and really figure out where to go. I guess like one of the things that's been really interesting for me and helpful with business builder camp is when I initially came into it and like the big camps, I'm looking at these other businesses and I'm going, Oh, they've got the, they've got answers. They've got answers. I know they've got answers. Right. And then realizing, yeah, but I get to make a decision about if that works for me. Right. I get to, I get to decide it's, and it's okay if it's different from what someone suggested to me, because I'm the expert in what I do. And so it's that creativity space and thinking if it be by journaling doodling pictures, pulling off a meme or something that I'm just writing over and over again, um, that I'm finding like my, my voice as a leader. So I'm not sure that answered your question, but Uh, I think. uh, No, no, that's, no, that's great. I I'm good at being busy, but I need space. I need to create space. And then you use colors and pictures and visuals in a special journal, which it looks like kind of has like textured paper. And then, then that's what you make real. And again, well, I think you're not alone. There's a lot of business owners I work with, and I've dealt with this where we tend to be people that in a past job were recognized for like working hard and productivity and all that. And so that's the easier path is to just go, you know, find a bunch of stuff to do but that doesn't always give us the time to be able to create the picture of what's the better version. So that's really, it's really helpful. And, and I love the fact that you, after sitting in, in the room with other people, well, sure. I always ask my coach, what should I do? Just tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Wouldn't that be easier if they had? Wouldn't it be easier? (laughs) Right. And, and the reality is, Um, it all adds up. We're creating a life. We're creating a business. We're serving people. And at the core of it is Fran. At the core of it for you is Gabby and the next 
occupational therapist that comes through your school. That's what's at the core of it. And then you just keep um, moving ahead, taking another step. And you look behind, you're like, wow, look at this picture that I've created on the canvas of, of business building. You're, you're doing that. So sure you answered it correctly because there is no like absolute, right? Same thing. Like we seek the absolute correct answer and there, there isn't such a thing. Um, so just practically speaking, you're serving Fran, you're doing that a few days a week. That's money work. That is paying the bills. And then a lot of people might have taken that and said, you know what? I think I'd like to coach uh, other occupational therapists to do the same thing or hire hire somebody to do this work in New Jersey. But yeah, you've, you've kind of done that all on the fly. Like you bought um, from your mentor, the, the training program to train. So that's the other part of your business. As you said, there's two parts. The other part is an online training program combined with behind the wheel training, where it's again, just visually it's you uh, and two or three other occupational therapists in a vehicle all and, and the smiles abound. I always see the pictures. You're having fun while you're doing this. So you're you're in the happiness business. You get Fran in the driver's seat and she's thrilled to get her driver's license. And then you get these other occupational therapists and they're in the vehicle and they're thrilled to get the training to be able to go out and do that work in their community and build their little business. Right. And you've done that kind of kind of all together. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, I think it's, it's been pretty incredible. I mean, it's really, I I was just, I've said this, I say, I've been saying it more and more recently, but I was just talking to another OT here in Pennsylvania and um, she's fighting with uh, health insurance coverage. And I said to her, oh, you're, I know what you're doing is really important. I'm so glad I don't have to do that. <laughs> Um, I've been an OT uh, when I started my practice, I've been an OT for almost 20 years and it's only in my own practice that I felt the most like an occupational therapist yeah. where I haven't felt that another system, you know, we have billing codes that dictate to us how to bill, how to document. I don't have to deal with any of that. I get to focus on the driver the OT and serve people in a really big way that they need. And that, that just feeds me. It really feeds me. And, you know, the, like you said, the client side, the friend side is kind of, I mean, both sides are really the money work for me. I make pretty good money in both places, but being with my clients feeds me and excites me for mm -hmm. when I I'm with my OTs which feeds me and excites me to be with my clients. And so I almost need that yin and that yang. I need both pieces, which is why when it comes to delegating, it's become a little bit tricky for me. Um, I really enjoy the work of the different pieces. So that's something for me I, that I keep thinking about for the future. I mean, I've got Gabby, which is a big step for me and she's amazing. Yeah, could you, uh, so I think that might be of interest to people you were doing this work in Pennsylvania. You've learned how to get leads, as we would say, or phone calls, the phone rings. People say, hey, can you come help me get back behind the wheel? Yep. And then, yeah, you decide to bring Gabby on. And, and I think the what to do, so there's no sitting in a room and everybody has the answers. It's not that. And yet there are some things that when I hear other people tell their story of what they created, I can see how I might create something like that. So yeah, what tell us about you just look you looked up and thought for a moment and that's great. How did how did Gabby come about? How does that work? So she actually is somebody who I met during the pandemic. And so as you can imagine, my job really had to shift when we had to stay at home. Blessing in disguise, many blessings. You know, I we were able to be home with our daughter, which was fantastic. We didn't have that strain or stress. But I also wasn't making any money. I wasn't treating anybody. You couldn't get in the car with people. Right. I couldn't. Right. 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 And there was nowhere for them to go anyway. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Um, so that was an interesting time. And it was during that time, you know, I, I, in my head, I 
was a little bit negative initially. I was thinking, oh my gosh, there aren't going to be any OTs. We're going to want to use this time to invest in their education and to build and to grow. Wrong, Susie. Yeah, there's always people interested in building and growing, right? And Gabby was one of those OTs. And she reached out to me and, um, you know, it's an investment to get trained as a specialist. So I like to have a phone call because I want it to be right for the person. So we get on a phone call and we have a conversation. She's like, I, you know, I'm in, this is exciting. I love this. She did the online education. And then as soon as I had a workshop, she came and she just kind of, she kept popping up. And I thought, okay, this, I keep thinking about this idea of another person. Let me just see where, where this Gabby goes. If she listens to this, <laughs> I hope she does, but she, um, she was persistent and she kept coming back. And that really made a great impression on me because it showed me she was determined and dedicated. And I thought, you know, um, we just really clicked in a nice way. And at the last, last business builder camp, I think it was Tom who Tom Garrity said about um, picking people like to work for you that are the right people who your values align. Right. And I loved that because that's what I did with Gabby without defining it. She had the skill set also, right? But I was going to train her to be a specialist. I was going to give her that experience, but I really liked who she was. And um, I've been a manager in the past and I've managed excellent people, but managing is always managing. And so there was a bit of me that was hesitant on that piece. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to define this. I'm the leader in this. I get to define it how I want. I get to set it up how I want. I was really clear with Gabby on kind of where we were going to be that I'm a resource for her. And right now we're in a relationship where she's invested with me for three years. And then she's going to decide if she wants to start on her own or stay with me. And I love that because I ultimately want people to, like, if she wants her own peace, go for it. And if she wants to stay, I already told her she's welcome to stay because we've got this, this great thing going too. Um, but it's been, it was a scary thing for me to hire someone. I really, I had a hard time. I felt a lot of responsibility. And then I thought, wait, I can do this in a way that it's low risk for all of us. <laughs> and high reward. Actually. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The rewards are great. It's so nice. Like even we went on vacation for two weeks and I was going to put my phone just like on voicemail. Oh my gosh. I get anywhere from 10 to sometimes 15 phone calls a week. What I was going to do that for two weeks and call mm. those people back. That's just crazy. I had Gabby. I could forward the calls over and she's just awesome. And then we, I gave her an incentive for every person she scheduled. And that was huge for helping her kind of find her voice with like selling and serving also. Yeah. Yeah. A, a, another win-win. So again, I hear what, what I heard in that was you, uh, I don't know if you literally did that in your journal or your notebook, but you wrote down, created, thought of, and then communicated to her how, how you felt like this could work and you made some agreements with her. So it's another example of you creating right on this canvas of uh, what, what you think will be beneficial. You've got a good heart. You want to serve the client. You want to serve her. And yeah, you're, you're living intentionally and drawing it out in color and, and pictures. It's really great. Yeah, that was exciting. And it was kind of um, also, I probably, it's one of those things you think, oh, maybe I should have started that sooner, but everything happens as it's supposed to. Um, what really, really got me going is I had a car sitting in my driveway. You know, I, I'd been successful enough that I made a purchase of a vehicle, which I had kind of wanted to do. But yeah. then I, once I got the Subaru, I was like, oh, now I've got this other Impala just sitting here. Well, now it's a no brainer. Now I need to really move on this piece. So that's, and that, so that's interesting. That's worth teasing out a little bit. Um, you you have two vehicles with controls, with all the adaptive controls, Actually, which by three. the way, huh? I have three. Three now, because yep. there's another special car. So that's fun. Uh, more creativity, more, more fun. But two cars with the the controls, which you've 
that that has been created too. People install those controls and provide those controls I, for free, right? Usually, yeah, we've got really wonderful vendors who are willing to donate the equipment because, you know, so there's kind of like different brands like Nike or Reebok. For sure. shoes. So there's different brands. And so, yeah, the they want to have their stuff in your car because that's what the client yeah. sees. Yep. Yep. So we, we were just talking in Business Builder Camp on the online platform about, I don't know if you caught that the other day, resources. Resources are, are resources limited? A res- as a belief, are resources limited? And uh, I, I, my, my coach asked me that, or because I said it. I said, if resources were unlimited, here's what I'd do. And she said, Wayne, are, are, do you believe that? Are resources limited? And I was like, no, I don't believe that. Resources aren't. An individual resource might be limited for sure. But resource says, no, they're not limited. It's, it's just, it takes creativity to connect to the resources or to go obtain or channel. And that's what you're doing. You're through a creativity and asking questions. Now the resources come into the car. You have these two cars. And sometimes, you know, we all get this question. We, I don't think that it, if you build it, uh, he will come was from yeah. Kevin Costner's Field of Dreams, right? So if you have the car with the controls, you, it, having a whole fleet of cars with the the adaptive um, equipment doesn't mean that more Gabby's and more clients are going to infinitely show up. But because you had one more, then you went out. So sometimes we have to kind of step forward and get the equipment or build the building or buy the truck or whatever. And then as we've shown God in the universe that we're open for business, then I think things come in to our life, right? Yeah, I really believe in that. That that's been a big piece for me in my business as well as growing my growth mindset and doing things um, that you. So there's been a lot of. Oops, I'm sorry about that. Todd's decided he wanted to participate. Todd the dog. <laughs> um, there's, there's been a lot of work for me around um, money. Yeah. Right. So because I. I'm naturally a very frugal person and I like, I like to have money. I do. And, but I, at the same time, you know, money can be evil, right? If you have too much money, like you're, you become a greedy person, like the whole Scrooge thing. I watched way too much of that. Um, So I've had to do a lot of work around that and kind of changing my mindset to a growth mindset, right? So having the car, Um, So in June of 2020, when before the crash of car issues and they were 0% down and 0% financing, well, that's a no brainer. Like there's the universe telling you, you can go for this, you go for it. Right. So doing those things, bringing on the car, even stuff like um, I love this time of year to purchase new assessment tools right? Building my business, like showing that I'm growing and doing something new or better or different, I think is so important for building it, right? Building what you're going to go to. Um, And that was the other idea behind us getting the Tesla. Um, That had kind of been a family goal um, when I started my practice my husband and I decided we were going to sell off our one family vehicle so that I had enough money to kind of make the purchase I needed to with the equipment and the vehicles and everything else. And buddy has always wanted a Tesla, but I've always wanted a Tesla too, because I see where things are going. I like for OT and talk about like a creative slate. I'm starting to see people who want to drive a really cool car, who want to use technology in a really cool way to help overcome and adapt different things. And so when the opportunity presented itself, I was like, okay, now we're getting a Tesla. We're doing this because we can, and this is the space we're going to be in. And I don't do tons of stuff with it with clients right now. You kind of have to graduate because it's such a different car and most people haven't driven it. Sure. Right. So I'm not going to put someone who's brand new to hand controls in the Tesla that drives completely differently. But well, yeah, once you graduate and you get your license and it makes sense, let's do it. But I also put all my OT students in it and I'm showing them 
the different technology and the ideas because you know driverless cars could be in our future i know there's a lot of debate about that i'm sure you know that's more in my stratosphere than other people's stratospheres but technology is an important piece of this puzzle as i kind of move and stay relevant in the world of driving rehab driving rehab is going to look very different in 10 years and i'm excited about it cuz i can't wait to go there i just think it's so interesting so i'm building the space so i can play and think and create there Wonderful. And you, you mentioned, well, so now, now the Tesla has come out, which is one of the other unique things about what you do and how you're always staying ahead and having fun. And you mentioned the money and, and how you've worked through some of that. And I see behind you, the book, you are a badass <laughs> at making money. It's right here next to my money tree. The money tree. Well, what's the, what's the money tree? So I don't know. This is this. That's what this plant is called is a money tree. Oh, really? Yeah. You're supposed to bring a money tree into your office space. And I really like plants. And then, yeah, you're right. I've got this guy in flesh and then on audio, audio book. By Jen Cicero, you're a badass at making money <clears throat> and, and you're listening to that and it's helping you. And uh, you, you certainly um, seem like you've transcended a lot of those beliefs when you can go out and take, ah, interest rates are good. I'm going to buy one of these cars. Uh, and, and you did it. So well done, Susie. On the journey, uh, one of the things I, you know, we've heard a lot of good things and about your creativity, but I, it's also helpful to hear that I'm not alone. If I have worries or when I hit tough spots, um, what are what are some of the challenging times that you've gone through on this business build journey? Um, you know, I recently I I was working in my small business group, and I would say, you know, for me, as much as I'd like to say I've transcended a lot of the money stuff, that's really come back up for me and has been a big piece I've had to really refocus on. Um, and it was it's kind of funny because I've had a lot of success and yet it's very easy for me not to focus on that piece. And, you know, I, it's the stronger voice in my head is the worry, the frugality. And I remember sharing with the group last week, it was kind of a disappointment to realize something I thought I had. I was like, I thought I got this right. And then I don't, but just the reminder, it's a muscle and it's a work in progress. And that it's all part of the process. But the money piece is one that's come up for me and is definitely a struggle and something I have to kind of keep in check for myself because when I don't work on it, my growth mindset shifts. I like the, if you've ever seen the picture of the brain with the growth versus the fixed, like that is me to a T. I definitely can just shift kind of from one to the other. And I just really need to be conscious of that. You know, and everyone has an off day. We all have off days. Um, and giving yourself a little grace when you have off days, not every day has to be 150%, right? Um, a big theme for our group, I feel has been, you know, building your business in a slow and meaningful way or a paced and happy way. And I kind of think of paced and happy um, those weren't the exact words, but that's been really helpful to me. I don't have to do everything right now, right? Giving myself a little patience as I grow has been another obstacle for me. Yeah, the <clears throat> in in case it's helpful to people, the the quote that you're talking about came from the the set of cards that I have that are. Steve Chandlerisms and Steve is a coach that I've worked with. And this one says, you can accomplish your goal in a very relaxed, slow and fun way, which I try to read slowly. Right. Right. And that seems to have really resonated with a lot of people. Yeah. In our group, because it, it seems that all these messages come at us that it has to be, um, like high octane, fast, high pressure, grow, scale. And the experience of many of us has been that time takes time and it adds up, but we're constantly growing, constantly 
expanding. And I think like for me, especially around this time of year, I've just reminded myself, this is exactly why I'm doing this. I'm I'm running my business. I'm doing things the way I'm doing it so I can be joyful and so I can be happy and so I can be present in my family. And it's okay. I don't have to do everything in the first year. My goodness, if I got it done, what would I do next? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? And I think that um it that's I'm not always that insightful. I often feel agitated and it's kind of a balance because we need that that yep. agitation to grow as well. But you can't, I always think about that there was, I was in Seattle, Washington in a little coffee shop and there's a little picture of a little girl tightrope walking with an umbrella and she's about to like teeter off. Sure. And it said, sure. said something about you have to lose your balance to find it. And I always think about that when I kind of get a little bit agitated. I think maybe I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And then I remind myself exactly where I'm supposed to be. I have to lose my balance a little bit to find it. And then when you find it, it's not forever, right? It's a process. None of it's forever. Yeah. And I, and I, somebody told me, I said, balance is a verb in the, in the, Ah. for, for entrepreneurs, it's a verb. And that's what I picture the little girl with the umbrella it's back and back and forth yeah you talk in our I, I've heard you mention this agitation agitation to growth and I yeah I, I we're seeking that as well it's not that we're looking to be stagnant it's not that not that we're looking to stay we do actively seek out that agitation so um one of the things I heard you say and this isn't a coaching session for you exactly but we can go there they can't help it a little bit. <laughs> you mentioned that hiring Gabby, making that decision to hire somebody that you were afraid, right? Um, what are you afraid of now? Um, I think uh, I know <laughs> Todd has an opinion. <laughs> um, I'm afraid sometimes if I take a break, that it's all going to fall apart. And I was thinking about this. I listened to Casey's, your interview with Casey yesterday. And so I've been sitting with kind of the conversation about if something were to happen, could I step away? Because that really is the goal for me with my business is to be able to take a two week vacation, to be able to stay home when Megan's sick, to be able to, you know, have Christmas. Like those are my goals. Right. And so it was really helpful to think about it. And for me, what was coming up is wow, I really do have a fear that maybe I've just been lucky. And if I stop or I take a break, it's going to fall apart. And I have to kind of catch myself and say, okay, let's think of examples in our life where you've taken a break and it's been okay. Or how, like, if things do fall apart, you know, like losing my job, I would consider to be like a big, it felt like a big fall apart. Well, Mm -hmm. we made choices from there. Like I've got the resources I need to keep going. So kind of sitting with that fear and saying, I see you, that's not really rational, you know, rational, that doesn't make sense and working on examples. Um, and I told you the other thing I've been working on is examples of when I've been brave. So to flex those muscles again, like around, um, like when you've stood up and done something so that when you face something like that, you're like, Hey, I've got this. Um, and that's been an interesting exercise for me as well. Um, well, you're saying like two things there. If I'm, I'm afraid that if I take a break, it'll all fall apart. Mm-hmm. And you're recognizing that 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 is um, like an insidious fear that is not truth. And you can see that it's not truth. And it may actually point ahead to to a higher state because part of what you're on the journey of you drew a spiral now you drew what you were drawing a spiral with the decision making funnel that you showed me a little while ago spiral is all also used to spiral up and show that people are, are spiraling up and there's the way that you turned it because it's hard to draw a spiral in two dimensions it's almost like it's spiraling up and there's another horizontal where it breaks horizontal and you could write a word in there and and this question you have or this fear may be 
I'm pointing you towards a, another level, another another place that you're headed. When you get out that journal and have some time to think and and draw, uh, I think it's going to point you in the direction of of kind of the next place to go. And the fact that you listen to Casey's podcast episode where, yeah, she was talking about a situation that nobody wanted in their family, which was the sudden death of a family member, but she was able to take the time that she needed to care for her family. So for you to listen to that and go, it's not that we're looking for, for that, but, but to be able to have the freedom to uh, take time off when you're already doing some of that, you've already been on a really nice long vacation in Italy. And uh, so you've already evolved to a, another place. And so you know that that whole thing about if you're not, if you don't work, it'll all fall apart, but there, but it, but it could be pointing you towards, Okay, so now you got Gabby in the picture and you got um, your classes and online and I'll be excited to hear what you what you see as as the next place that you're going to step to is Susie. I'm excited to see it too. <laughs> it's interesting because right if you think about what we started with, my advice was to create space also right so I've got this. I know I need the space. I do well when I'm in that space. I know I can come out of that space, but that's, so it's an interesting thing um, that I've just been trying to work on because it's something that's been kind of brewing. And um, I listened to a really great podcast that was helpful to me. It was one of the clients on demands and they were just um, going through like the best thing to do is, you know, most of us have this fear that we just don't define. We don't spend the time to define it, define it and figure out what it is what exactly it is that you're afraid of. And it's not something you can do in one setting, you know, so giving yourself permission to work on that. Um, but that's like, what is, what is, I'm really trying to drill down. Like, what is it? Because I can feel like something tugging a little, but that's okay. That's okay. We're going to look at it. We're going to figure it out. And then we're going to keep going because that's what we do. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. It's, um, I'm excited for you. And so uh, two more things. One is th there's been numerous things that you've talked about that would give uh, business builders an opportunity to sit and reflect and write about what it means in their own life. And I, I hope you listen back to your own episode when we publish this, because I know I, I, I have been listening to these episodes personally, and because I'm really listening as opposed to right now, I'm trying to pay attention to you and ask the next question. When I listen back to uh, Kathy Brooks and Brian Minninger, I get so much out of listening. And I was like, wow, I don't even remember them saying that. So I hope you listen back to your own episode because you've shared a lot of wisdom, even for yourself. So I think you've already created a lot of opportunities for people to sit and reflect and write things out. Is there anything else that you would um, want to tell business owners who are on the path, on the journey, that they could sit in a quiet time and reflect on that you think would be helpful for them? Um, the, the, the other thing that really helps me is not every day, but routinely to keep thinking about the bigger picture. The where am I going? My three year, my five year. It's very hard for me. But I feel like the more I do it, the better sense I'm getting where I'm going. And I feel like it's actually helping me to lead my company where it needs to go. So it's a, it, it was like one of those things that you started with us, Wayne, with our, like our three month check-ins. And I'm like looking at that box going, oh God, I have no idea what I want to do in three or five years. I have no idea. Well, that's good. That's good. You have no idea, but that doesn't mean to put the question down. Right. So I think from a business builder standpoint, having those really big goals is really important. It's exactly like what I talk about with patients after an injury or illness, like driving is a really big goal. We need those really big goals to get us where we're going. And so that would be my advice is to, you know, think about what has to happen on a quarterly, daily, weekly basis. Mm -hmm but keep the really big goals there and don't be afraid to just dream really big. And when it seems like you have no idea how to get there, ask other people what they see as a path and then know you can make the decisions yourself. 
Very nice. Wonderful advice. Um, dream and write and draw. Thank you for that. And and you're not alone. Yeah, a, a lot of people, and me included, to to sit and make it okay to create a big dream. It's it's challenging, but it's like practice, like in everything else. Like it, you said it, it's like a muscle. And the more you do it, the more it develops. So that's wonderful. And <clears throat> so last thing is, uh, if that if because we want to share this with with lots of people and people in your world if an occupational therapist is listening to this and they'd like to uh, come into your world and find out about what it's like to start their own private practice and maybe work uh, two or three days a week and have people that are calling them so they can be helping people like Fran uh, how do they start that journey with you? How do they get in touch with you? And, and I guess also drivers too, yeah. if anybody really, you're just a great resource for drivers that need to get behind the wheel or anybody who has an aging parent or anything. So just how, how do we get in touch with you? How do we start the process? I love to connect with people. I spend all day doing that. So don't hesitate. Um, the easiest, most direct way would be to use my email, which is S-U-S-I-E at adaptivemobility.com, or you can learn about me and the education if you visit adaptivemobility.com. Um, I probably shouldn't put you on the spot. Do you still have OT superhero uh, stickers? Oh yeah, we sure do. And I just got a whole bunch of more in. They're a little, these are a little smaller, but mm-hmm. I got a whole bunch of these because they had a really great sale, right? Talk about building for the future. I was like, oh, yeah, I need like 2000 of those for sure. <laughs> awesome. So um, anybody who's listening, who is an OT, you, you are also a, a superhero. And if you reach out to Susie, she can get you an OT superhero. This has been an absolute joy. <clears throat> uh, not surprisingly to me, you've always got great energy and lots of smiles just like that. And as I said, you're doing such good work in the world. So thanks for showing up today and sharing your message with all the other business builders out there, Susie. My pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity. Okay. Take care. Bye. Thank you for tuning into the Business Builder Way podcast. If this episode spoke to you, click that subscribe button and share it with a friend. That's how this message gets out into the world. If it is helpful for us to have a short conversation, I'd love to do that. Send me an email at wayne at businessbuildercamp.com.